Just a quick word of introduction because I feel that we bear some uh, responsibility and even guilt, some culpability for having Samson here preaching uh, today. And the fact that this is not the first time he's preached. Because the first time he preached was two years ago here, was it not? And since then, other people have got into the game and realized that Samson can preach. <laughs> Much as he may resist the call. So I would like for you to pray in your hearts and support and, and, and pray for that gift of the Holy Spirit uh, and give a warm welcome to Mr. Samson McCormick. I just like to do that when I'm on the microphone. Is this thing on? <laughs> Good morning. How are y'all doing? Good. We made it to another Sunday. <laughs> That's always a blessing. With all the challenges that we all go through during the week, it's just some of us, some struggles are different from other ones. Mine is not to choke my neighbor. And I've got to do another week not doing it. Sometimes it's health things, uh, health issues, family issues, but we made it and we are here. And that is a blessing. So thank y'all for being here, um, and there's a reason all of us are here. Yes. And thank you all for, in your own little ways, acknowledging in your spirit that reason and finding your way here amongst this family. So thank you so much for that. Um, and I have to acknowledge what uh, Reverend Clinton said about, I am nobody's pastor, okay? Uh, I will be the first to say that. Like, if you ever rode with me in a car, it just wouldn't work. I'm sorry. <laughs> I could be really friendly up until that car ride. Like, you would think I was probably the most humane and loving and most divine person ever. ever. But if somebody cuts me off, and then, uh, the conversation will go, yes, God is divine, and patience is necessary. Hold on to this murder! And it will be over with. So I am just trying to stay in my lane. But uh, thank you all for allowing me to uh, be here and share this moment with you all. And I have to say, give it up for the choir, too. <laughs> Every time I come here, I go back and I tell, well, I was in D.C. last time, but I always go back and I tell everybody, I'd be like, y'all have got to, and next time I come, I'm going to bring the people with me. I go back and tell everybody, I'd be like, y'all are, are sleeping on MCC Coachella Valley, okay? Because them white people down there be saying it. Me too. Like, they, I don't know. Like, y'all be, y'all got some soul over there. So, you know, like, like, and I can feel it. Um, but I am from uh, North Carolina originally, um, of the Southern Pentecostal Apostolic faith. So, oh, it's a, oh, see, that sounds like some folks over there know what I'm talking about. So, see, it, but it's always refreshing. First of all, I think it's still, what time is it? I gotta check it to you. Uh -oh. See y'all are making good time. Like this is just like people would still be warming up their vocal cords down there right now. Like, y'all ceiling fans are still intact. That's amazing. They swing around on the ceiling fans. They drop kick kick each other in the name of Jesus. You take a break. You go get a fish sandwich and you come back for another twelve hours. So, uh, we are actually gonna get out while it's still daylight outside. Oh my God! I won't come along this any longer. Um, but I'm really happy to be here. And I have a little something to share with y'all, and I hope um, that it touches somebody. <coughs> Amen? Amen. Yeah. So, as we all know by watching the news and being out in the world, we know that this world can sometimes be a challenging place <coughs> to live, to say the least. Watching the news and even enduring the hardships in our own lives, I'm sure that many of us have wondered why life at times can be so cruel and punishing. As many of us deal with these trials that can sometimes include loneliness, loss of loved ones, depression, lack of resources, there's nothing worse than in your world. <laughs> For ourselves and or our families, hunger, poverty, sickness, racism, homophobia, sexism, fear of one another, violence, war, police brutality, and countless other calamities. The list goes on. As children, those of us who were fortunate enough were allowed to experience the world and life from a more shielded lens. 
which allowed us a more jovial perspective. People often ask me, they say, what do you miss about being a kid? I say, not paying bills. That's one of the same things. For a long time, my only care in the world was to make sure that the brownies came out right in my easy big <laughs> <laughs> but as we got a little older and our parents realized that we wouldn't always be under their protective watch, they warned us of the things to do and not to do and to be aware of. Don't talk to strangers. That was a big thing one time. People were stealing kids now. Look like one kid. Look both ways before you cross the street. Always wear, and I'm from the South, I know it's called underwears, but in the South we call them drawers. You know, <laughs> always wear a pair of clean drawers. Come on, wait. Just in case you end up in an ambulance. <laughs> 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 I feel like, am I going to get a date in the ambulance? <laughs> Um, being a young black male, aging into adolescence, the instructions became more serious. Make sure you're in the house before the street lights come on. Don't make me come out there and get you. I thought it was because my mama was being mean, it was because she was concerned. Always hang on to your receipt when you leave a store in case they accuse you of stealing. If the cops pull you over or stop you, Keep your hands in sight. Do what they say and respond to them by saying yes, sir, and no, sir. My mother and my elders were aware of the potential hazards that could sometimes exist in our simple day-to-day -day living. And upon migrating to the urban inner city from the South, I became exposed to more realities that I needed to navigate my way through. Drive-by shootings, robberies, dilapidated schoolhouses, and insufficient educational opportunities, extreme poverty that contributed to crime, drug abuse, hopelessness, misery, and despair. I always believed that it was impossible for young people to die, but I was forced to reckon with a different reality seeing kids my age, 12 years old, dead at the hands of police officers and street bullets. Every morning before I left for school or in the evenings to go to a friendly, or excuse me, go to a friend's house to play Nintendo or the playground, a flicker of worry showed in my mother's eyes as caution filled her instruction to please be careful and make it back home safely. It didn't take me long to understand that my mother was trying to prepare me for the realities of the real world around me. And as I grew older, being able to understand the news I hear my elders constantly remind one another that we were living in our last days. And that always scared the hell out of me because I never knew what that meant. And I always thought that they were lucky because as old as they were, they would get the benefit of dying peaceably before the world exploded or something. Whatever the last days connotated. And for a long time, because I never knew what that meant, I lived in a bubble of fear. It wasn't until after a few epiphanies that I was finally able to break free of the fear of living. And most of all, realize that it's not the last phase. Because life begins where we choose in our minds, where we make up in our minds to create it for ourselves and one another. Amen. I do believe somewhere along the way that we've lost our grips on love, humanity, unity, compassion. But that some way, Somehow, through doing the work of love, of grace, and letting that light that God has placed in us to shine, that we can find a way to make this world a better place. Amen. 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 So before we go a little further, is it okay if we pray? Okay. okay. Dear Lord, precious and loving God, we thank you for bringing us here in this moment today to hear your voice to experience the human touch, the spiritual touch, and to be fed however you choose to feed us here today. We know that you make no mistakes. And we realize that in each of us, you see the beauty. Sometimes that we don't see in ourselves. 
help us to experience that beauty today in each other, in revelations, and as we go back out to the world. Help us to show each other a little bit more love, to be a, bit, a little bit more compassionate and understanding, to hold on to our faith and believe that life is worth living. And we thank you for this experience. In your name we pray and thank you. Ashe and amen. Amen. I'm not going to hold y'all long today. That's what they would say if you were down in the South. And then 12 o'clock midnight, you would just be with <laughs> But I promise this is not going to be long, okay? Um, so let's get into it. My approach to spirituality and religion happened to be a bit unconventional. I'm more than convinced that God can speak to us anywhere, through anything, or anybody. Yes. Yeah. I don't know about y'all, but I've been on some dates where some said, you better get up out of here. <laughs> you know, it was so simple. That was God, okay? Little things where it's not expected. There, that's God, right? And some of the best shirts that I've had has been while like eating a piece of hot fried chicken. <laughs> hot and crispy dipped in a little hot sauce. That's church, okay? <laughs> and Lord knows that can minister to your stomach and your soul. I've experienced church twirling at an all-night dance party. Some of the best sermons that I've heard have come from small children, one being a seven-year-old who, seven who suggested that if you want to learn to love better, you should start with one of your friends that you hate. Or my favorite Aunt Jackie, who... Wow, she is my spiritual advisor while shoving a cigarette to the corner of her mouth and lightning will remind me that baby, ain't no use in trying to rush through life. Because no matter where you go, there you are. And you can't take life too seriously because none of us are going to make it out alive. These statements are simple yet profound. And with that, I hope you'll allow me to, uh, excuse me, and with that, I hope you'll allow me today to encourage you with what I would like to call the Gospel of Diana Ross. <laughs> I love the old divas, right? They don't make them like that anymore, right? Joan Crawford's, <laughs> Betty Davis, <laughs> Ella Fitzgerald, you know, and of course, I love Patti LaBelle, and then there's Diana Ross. Something about Diana Ross. When it comes to Miss Ross, among the first adjectives that come to mind is Diva. Known as much for her hair, bows, and immaculate gowns as her ego, there's no denying that Miss Ross is fabulous, honey. <laughs> and in April 1970, Miss Ross made her departure from her background singers, better known as the Supremes, as she embarked on her solo career. She recorded a song entitled Reach Out and Touch Somebody's Hand. And this three-minute record carried heavy gospel influences and expressed the message meant to invigorate social consciousness regarding the human condition. The course of the song is to simply reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place if you can. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place if you can. And I'm here to pose the question to you, family. When is the last time that you've taken a moment to reach out and text somebody? Walking down the street seeing people consumed by iPhones, or the way we avoid eye contact with one another, or simply failing to return a head nod, hello, or a smile, it's quite easy to realize how disconnected we are from one another, and how much further we continue to push one another away. Observing the news of never-ending wars and our children and young adults killed on the streets without justice, as harmless law officials and politicians continue sitting in office as affected communities cry out in protest, I pose the question, when are we going to reach out and touch each other, y'all? Yes. Will it come to a point where we face a collapse as a people so devastating? that the only choice we have is to finally realize that we are in fact one people who all need one another. As we become a more self-serving society, we can sometimes look at things and ask, if this can't benefit me, then why should I care? 
I myself am guilty of this kind of mentality at times, especially when it comes to those that I don't like. Conservatives, bigots, people who don't turn on their signals in front of me in traffic. <laughs> I'm so serious about that. Great. To selflessly display authentic compassion and loving kindness can be a challenge. When I face with these kinds of challenges, I am often reminded of times in my life when people with their own challenge to show love have failed to extend kindness, love, compassion, and understanding to me when I most needed it. Those Sundays, sitting in church as a young teenager, aware of my sexuality, and listening to the pastor call people like me faggots who contributed, contributed to the, 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 excuse me, I need to slow down. <laughs> Sitting in a church as a young teenager, aware of my sexuality, and listening to a pastor call people like me, beautiful, gorgeous people like me, <laughs> faggots, <laughs> who were contributing to the decline of masculinity in the black community, and in an abomination unto God that I was undeserving of human or divine love or on several occasions walking down a street dressed even in nice clothing, but having police officers stop and detain me in handcuffs on a crowded street of onlookers because I happen to fit the description of a dark-skinned black male in jeans, fitted baseball cap, and t-shirt. Like there aren't a lot of those right now. I'm reminded of a time being homeless, sleeping in Greyhound bus stations at a 1989 red hatchback geostorm with my mother in the dead of winter at 14, and often not knowing where food or shelter may come from ever again. These times have reminded me of what it felt like to be down and need a hand. Then I'm reminded of the times in those situations where they became a little easier to deal with and make it through because Somebody reached out to touch me. Yeah. The times when, although she may not have been, excuse me, although she may have been just as hungry, my mother sacrificed a meal to make sure that I ate, while her stomach growled very loudly. Those nights that strangers allowed us into their homes and shared their food, allowed us to bathe and sleep on their sofas and floors. Many who we never saw again, but I still remember because they helped us out along the way and reminded me that there are people in the world who can. Yes. I was reassured of love when I think about those Sundays listening to those messages, <clears throat> tears streaming down my face because I was being taught that God didn't love me. And the woman who sat next to me in church daring me to put my ties in that offer basket one Sunday pushing my money back into my hand and telling me, God loves you, baby. And it's not any man's job to try to make anybody believe anything else. She reminded me of the Nina Simone quote, that you have to learn to get up from the table when love is no longer being served. Amen. As she grabbed my hand and walked me out of that sanctuary, I asked, so you're gay too? And she replied, no, but I do have a heart. And that's not God speaking in there. Amen. Having a community of all people, black, white, gathering in protest to raise their voices <coughs> against the arrest of innocent black men in our neighborhoods, seeing pastors who preach damnation to gay, lesbian, and transgender people show up to the LGBT events to apologize and learn more about our community or simply walking down a street on a day that I may be feeling like crap. You know those days that are just challenging where it seems nothing is going right. And having somebody look at you and smile, especially if it's a cute boy. <laughs> like, that's God. Or tell you, you look nice, or have a great day. All of these are things that have, that have all of them write so small, y'all. I'm sorry. I really, I'm up here, I'm like, I don't want to be like this. I'm getting to that age now where I need glasses. Right? And I teach people all the time, and I'm like, I know y'all can't tell, but I'm old. I am, I'm old. I know y'all can't tell me black people, but I'm 
We out in Texas, man, y'all. <laughs> somebody else, because somebody touched me, all it took was just a touch of love. In reaching out, many of us may not believe that we have enough to give someone else because financially, spiritually, emotionally, physically, many of us barely have enough to give ourselves. And I think about the backyard parties that we'd have in my little neighborhood growing up in the hood. Many of us were dirt poor without two pieces of bread put together. But we decided that we were going to take, have a big barbecue party. One person would bring a pack of hot dogs. Somebody else would bring a little marijuana. <laughs> Somebody else would bring the bread. Another person would bring a bag of chips. Then some chicken would show up. A little liquor, a boom box, and a pack of playing cards. And all of us were broke, but we had a party. And we took our little bit of nothing, brought it to that backyard, and made a whole lot of something. We have the best neighborhood backyard barbecues that you would ever go to in your life. In the same way, let's all bring the little bit of what we have to life's big barbecue. Every day that we are blessed with the opportunity to rise is another invitation to life's big get-together. And I challenge this family to, on a daily basis, ask ourselves, how can I be an expression of love? How can I leave this world a little bit better than when I found it? Let's go out to life's barbecue and take a few smiles, a little patience, especially in traffic for me, Lord. Some kind words and some joy. Let's extend forgiveness and lift our voices against injustice. God's greatest commandment is to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. That means, in this whole process, that we must establish self-love, that we often forget to give ourselves, because in the words of Minister RuPaul, if we can't love ourselves, how in the hell can we love somebody else? Just touch somebody. If we did this, we could end hunger and loneliness and depression, the stigma of HIV. We could eradicate hate crimes and racism, sexism and homophobia. Together, we would thrive and life for all of us could be so much better. Imagine that. Finally, a big table for all of us where love is the main order. The appetizer, entree, and dessert. All we have to do is reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place if you can. Take a little time out of your busy day to give encouragement to someone who's lost the way. Or would I be talking to a stone if I asked you to share a problem that's not your own? We can change things if we start giving. Why don't you reach out and touch somebody's hand? If you see an old friend on the street and he's down, Remember, his shoes could fit your feet. Just try a little kindness. You'll see it's something that comes easily. We can change things if we start giving. Why don't you reach out and touch somebody's hand? Make this world a better place if you can. Amen. Yeah.